we have two X-flare players on the Earth-facing disk, two filaments that are poised to erupt, and an Earth-directed stealthy solar storm. Those stories and more in the news this week. This space weather forecast is sponsored in part by Millersville University. Come get certified in broadcast space weather. Visit millersville.edu slash swen. Space weather this week is continuing to keep our attention. As we take a look at the Earth-facing disk, all eyes back around the turn of the month were on the east limb as old region 2994 began to rotate into view and it started firing off big M-class flares and even an X-class flare before it was fully in view yet and got its new number. Its new number is now 3006. And while we've been watching this region uh, firing off a bunch of flares, region 3000 2004 also started to develop, and by the third, this region was firing off big M-class flares and an X-class flare. In fact, this region on the third destabilized a whole larger region that then launched a stealthy Earth-directed solar storm, and we're going to talk more about that in a minute. Meanwhile, these two regions have been continuing to trade M-class flares back and forth. They are still X-flare players, so we are keeping an eye on them, but we are also keeping an eye on the two filaments that are sitting here in the north. The first one here actually looks like it's kind of erupting a little bit as we speak, but the second one looks like it's getting unstable, and that would mean we could possibly get yet another Earth-directed solar storm, so we're definitely going to keep our eyes on those. Meanwhile, we have yet another region that's going to be rotating into Earth view here in the next couple days, and it is also a solar storm producer. So Aurora photographers, man, you're going to get a lot of chances for potential Aurora here here over this next week, and amateur radio operators and emergency responders, those radio blackouts are going to keep on coming. Switching to our M-flare threat meter, you can see as we take a look at the X-ray flux back on the 30th, you can see things rising quite quickly and pop, pop, pop. Look at all these big flares. This was all due to region 2994, which became relabeled 3006. And you can see that big X flare there. That region continued to fire easily over that day before things began to calm down just a little bit. And it definitely caused some radio blackouts. Luckily, we got a little bit of a reprieve into the second, but then region 3004 started really growing rapidly, and you can see once again, back by the third, pop, pop, pop. Once again, we're getting these big flares, including an X flare. This is from region 3004. This is also about the time when that stealthy solar storm was launched toward Earth that is still making its way towards Earth and should hit us around the ninth. Meanwhile, things continue to ramp back down a little bit, but regions 3004 and 3006 are both still big flare players, so don't expect these radio blackouts to go away any time soon. And this means amateur radio operators and emergency responders, especially those using GPS reception, you're going to be dealing with radio blackouts on Earth's day side, and this does extend into dawn and dusk, so be aware of that. Plus, we have that new region that's going to be rotating into Earth view over the next few days, and that means big flares will remain on the menu. Switching to our solar storm conditions, as you can see, back on April 30th was really the last time we actually had any decent activity. Mainly this was due to some fast solar one, but we had a little bit of solar storms, like mini solar storms, packed in there. And that managed to bump us to active conditions and then up to storm levels for a short bit before things began to settle down. Now we did have another solar storm, but it grazed us on the first. It grazed us off to the west. That managed to keep us at unsettled conditions for a little bit, but really didn't bring us a lot new aurora chances. So things have been settling down and kind of settling down, and now we're kind of sitting at quiet conditions. And now we do have that other sol uh, stealthy solar storm that is due to hit us right around late on the 8th and into the 9th. So possibly these conditions could bump up just a little bit, but I'm not going to get too excited because this storm is expected to be pretty weak. Now, returning to that Earth-directed solar storm, this is our solar storm prediction model, Enlil. This is NASA's version of the model, and you're looking down at the sun from the North Pole with Earth being off to the right. 
And you can see that solar storm being launched, and it looks like it's a direct hit toward Earth. In fact, the impact should be late on the 8th, early into the 9th. But the issue is that if we take a look at the north-south cut, you can see that most of the solar storm actually looks like it's going to go north of Earth, which means it could be a glancing blow. Plus, the fact that the storm is slow means that it's likely going to be a pretty weak storm overall, even if it does hit Earth. However, if you're an aurora photographer and you're at high latitudes, well, this is a big enough impact that it might be worth a look. So what else does our sun have in store for us this week? Well, this is Stereo A. It's our partially far-sighted monitor. You can see here's Earth, here's the sun, and here's Stereo A staring at the sun just a little bit from the side. And as we take a look at the sun from Stereo's view, you can see region 3006 firing off those big flares. But look just behind that region on the east limb. In fact, you can see that region there Pow! Right on the 5th, it fires off a big solar storm. So this is a big solar storm player, and in fact, it could be a big flare player as well. So what this means is that as this region rotates into Earth view over the next couple days, not only could we continue to see those radio blackouts, but we could also get some decent aurora from a potential Earth-directed solar storm. So aurora photographers, you should be celebrating. We have more chances for aurora when this region rotates into view, and we also will see that solar flux stay boosted. Switching to our moon, we are now passing through the first quarter phase on our way to a full moon, and by the 10th, the moon will be about 65% illuminated. So unite sky watchers, if you want to catch those dim objects in the sky, you're going to need to check your local rise and set times. Switching to your solar storm conditions and aurora possibilities over the coming week, we are anticipating the weak hit from that stealthy solar storm that's on its way to Earth. Now, at high latitudes, NOAA is expecting active conditions with up to about a 30% chance of a major storm. But don't expect it to last all that long, especially considering that this is more of a glancing blow than it really is a direct hit. Now, at mid-latitudes, we're only expecting unsettled conditions, but we do have up to about a 25% chance of active conditions, and even a skosh of a chance of a minor storm. But likely, again, this is probably not going to be something that mid-latitude aurora photographers are going to be able to see. So you're probably going to just have to sit out and wait for the next one. Switching to our solar flare and particle radiation storm outlook over the coming week, we do have several big flare players on the Earth-facing disk this week, including region 3004 and region 3006, and this does mean that we have big risks for radio blackouts. In fact, NOAA's giving us about a 60% chance of big M flares and even a 25% chance of X-class flares over the next few days, and things may settle down just a little bit as the week progresses. But remember, we do have that new region that's going to rotate into Earth view here over the next couple days, and it could be a big flare player too. So that means radio blackouts are still on the menu for Earth's day side, and this does include issues near dawn and dusk for you GPS users, so stay vigilant. Now we also have solar flux sitting well into the triple digits. This could actually boost into the 120s when that new region rotates into view. We're just going to have to stay and see how, how it pans out when that region rotates into view and to see how active it is. But amateur radio operators, this does mean that we should get some decent radio propagation on Earth's day side, and it will maintain like that easily through the rest of this week and possibly next week as well, as long as you can handle all the noise on the bands from, from all these uh, big flare players. Now, as we take a look at the radiation storm possibility, right now we're sitting at the D1 normal level, but we do have an elevated risk for radiation storms, and this is due to those big flare players rotating to the sun's west limb. We have about a 10% chance of a radiation storm over the next few days, and that risk will easily remain like that and possibly grow over the next week or so. We're just going to have to stay vigilant. So if you are an airline traveler or you are a GPS user at high latitudes or an amateur radio operator, stay vigilant because we could get a radiation storm at any time. So the space weather this week continues to be a bit on the exciting side. We do have two big flare players in Earth view, and they continue to be firing off some 
big solar flares, and that could mean more solar storms could be on the way. Right now, we do have an, a stealthy Earth-directed solar storm that could give us some aurora at high latitudes. So aurora photographers, definitely uh, keep yourself on your toes. You could get some decent aurora shows at high latitudes. Mid-latitude aurora photographers, you're likely going to have to sit this one out, though. But that's not so bad because we do have yet another big solar storm producer that's going to be rotating into Earth view, and that could give us some more solar storm chances here over this next week. So keep your fingers crossed. Now, amateur radio operators and emergency responders, well, I'm sure you're loving that solar flux being boosted, but you're not really loving all the radio blackouts. And well, sadly to say that those radio blackouts may still be continuing over this next week with this new region that's going to be rotating into view. So be sure to stay vigilant and kind of just, you know, hang in there because things will get better uh, maybe over the next two weeks or so. Now, also you GPS users, definitely stay vigilant near dawn and near dusk and possibly even on the night side because we're going to have that weak solar storm. But it's if it brings aurora, that could be enough, enough to cause some GPS reception issues for you. So as long as you stay away from those regions, your GPS should be pretty good. I'm Tamitha Scove, the Space Weather Woman. Thank you for watching.